And welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's uh, premier uh, video production. We're here live at .conf, Splunk's annual user conference. We're at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm Jeff Kelly from wikibon.org, and I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Thank you, Jeff. Well, we've had quite a day here at, uh, at, at the Conf, Conf 12, and now we've learned what Splunk is all about, the, uh, what used to be the, the dive into the deep, dark cave of your of your log data. Uh, thankfully, yep. learning that from Rob and from Right, from Splunk, Splunk apparently is making it easy and, and fun. We keep hearing people love using the tool. Um, you know, it's make, making, uh, making kind of data analytics a fun thing to do. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to looking at all that data and saying, oh boy, what am I going to do with all that? Yeah, the, the, there's been a lot of fun today. I think the, 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 the constant kind of reinforcement of this message of how important the cultures of the company and the fun in the company and uh, our viewers, you didn't get to see how crazy Eric and Rob are really having a good time. They obviously like each other a lot and, and they definitely have a culture. The fact that Tom, our, our host and PR director, talked so much about how Godfrey is such a special guy and the way that he leads and his desk is out in the open um, at the company, he's not behind a desk and it sounds like all he does is visit um, customers, which is fantastic. His enthusiasm for customers and the way people are using this, this tool, it's so much more than, it's, than what was a data center centric uh, log file tracker. I think it's still probably the, the vast majority of the usages, but, but where this company's going and, and what it can do and, and kind of their mission is much more than that. And it's really been a fun, a fun day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, everyone's really happy with the company right now. They're doing very well. They're definitely on a hot streak. Um, you know, but definitely challenges lie ahead. They've, you know, they've mentioned uh, the fact that, you know, we're only going to see more and more types of machines with sensors and all sorts of new data sources coming online, and that's going to put the pressure on Splunk to continue delivering uh, kind of the functionality, the applications, to make sense of all of that and help people actually uh, draw correlations that help their business. So, you know, they've, they've come a long way. They've done uh, some, an excellent job with the IPO and, uh, you know, had a great quarter, but, you know, long term, there's still a lot of challenges. Uh, they definitely seem up to it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting world we're living in. There's so many uh, big data startups up, out there as well. They have lots of competition to deal right. with. Um, you know, there's, there's already been, uh, one former Splunker has, has moved off and started his own uh, company called uh, Logly. Uh, they're, you know, focusing on kind of similar market, and then you've got the, the more legacy players, uh, ArcSight, now part of a, uh, HP, plays right. in this market as well, though it takes a definitely a different approach. But my point is there's going to be some competition, so sure. uh, you know they've got their work cut out for them, but uh, definitely a really really good day. Saw some really interesting use cases. What for you, Jeff, were like, you know, the maybe one or two real uh, big takeaways you took, took from today? Uh, again, I think the culture thing that I touched on before I think was mm -hmm. pretty significant. It, I, I too been at a lot of startups. Um, I know a lot of the folks out in, in um, and TV Land have as well, and it's really hard. It's very seldom that there's a company that, that starts on a mission um, and, then, and then is able to execute that and grow and, and, and deliver a real company, delivering real value to real customers. I thought it was um, interesting that they came at this approach really looking for a problem. I think that's atypical. I think most of the time you talk to really successful companies, it was usually a person in a role that said, God, if I only had one of these, my job would be so much better, mm -hmm. so much easier. And then they go out and build that thing. Um, so I thought that was an interesting uh, comment that Rob said, where they really did their due diligence and their homework for a couple of years, trying to really investigate where was an opportunity. And the fact that they kind of, I don't want to say stumbled upon, because they, they worked on it for two <laughs> years, this, this, this data log file issue and this, this uh, morass and, 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 and no ability to really make sense of it or do anything with it. And in fact, as you said, and that was kind of the, the, the leading wave of what has now become this big data trend, mm -hmm. um, I thought was pretty, pretty interesting as well. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I think for me, you know, a couple of big takeaways, definitely the culture. I mean, you can tell, and not just the culture within the company, the culture around their customers as well. I mean, everybody here that we've had on today, we've had some great customers. We're very excited about the product. Um, you know, they've all talked about, again, how easy it is to use, um, how they're drawing correlations they never really could before. And it's simply, it really, in some cases, are building businesses on Splunk. So, right. um, you know, and then the enthusiasm and the uh, kind of uh, quirky nature of uh, some of the, uh, execs inside of Splunk, who are some really interesting guys. Yeah. Uh, really, some cool titles. Um, I think I'm going to 
take uh, take their advice and change my title uh, every two or three days on, <laughs> on Twitter. I'll come up with something good for the, by the end of the day. Yeah. Um, not Chief of Awesome is taken, but I'll, right. I'll come up with something. Um, so that definitely struck me. I mean, I think this is clearly not, despite the IPO, this is not a button-down corporation. This right. is a uh, definitely a bunch of group. Want a group of guys and, and women that love to have have fun, but also love what they're doing. So yeah. that's a good thing. You like to see that in, in a company. Um, you know, also I just think the technology is just powerful. I mean, I think that's that's the big thing for me is you know the culture is great, but if you don't have a technology that can back it up, a product that can actually deliver, then you have a problem. But that's not a problem. Splunkcast. Right. I mean, clearly, um, they are hitting. Uh, all the use cases their, their customers are looking for. They've built in enough flexibility in the platform to allow their customers to do other kinds of things to explore on their own, uh, you know, different use cases. Um, and that's very important because, uh, you know, you can't have a, a rigid kind of data structure type model if you want to survive in the big data world. And clearly Splunk understands this. Uh, made, make the product so that it's easy to integrate new data sources, uh, easy to build up new applications and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they've got the culture and they've got the technology. So, you know, two very important parts of any successful company. Right. So, um, and, and they're locking tremendous uh, inefficiency and undiscovered business value. The message bus guys, the fact that they can basically recreate a messaging business. How long mm -hmm. has messaging been around in email? A long time. And, and use the Splunk technology to, to recreate a new platform for messaging, leveraged across multiple pull um, mm -hmm. clouds, public and private, and even use the intelligence within the application to partition the loads based on the either the economic realities or um, mm -hmm. working efficiency. I thought it was pretty neat to, this, to the point where they can actually build a business on that, deliver great value to their clients, mm -hmm. and, and, and make enough money to pay their investors down the road. I think, uh, as again, as I said, my, my, my buddy Gamil Grand at Sierra Ventures, who's so excited about big data, because there's just a ton of inefficiency, but this new technology is allowing us to t attack where we've done it in other places, like in CRM and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ERP and, and other kind of big kind of technology waves that have really impacted um, what's going on. And then of course now they're talking about automotive, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And how much data is coming out of automotive? Look at automotive as as a, as a kind of a harbinger of, of new efficient ways to do things, all the way back to to Henry Ford and, and, and doing things on an assembly line instead of a bunch of guys standing around a, a chassis in a garage. Right, I don't think Henry, uh, back uh, back 100 plus years ago, was thinking about uh, the possibility of uh, running right. advanced analytics against yeah, that's uh, right. this car, but it would come a long way. Uh, so you're watching theCUBE, this is SiliconANGLE's uh, flagship video production. Uh, we're live here at uh, .conf 2012, that's Splunk's annual user conference. This is their third annual conference. Uh, we've got about we've got over a thousand attendees. That's customers and some partners, uh, some really great uh, customers we've had on the cube today. Some really good conversations we've had. Um, you know, another thing that kind of came through uh, is just very clear that the premise that you know that others have said as well that you know data really is the new oil of uh, this economy. It really is coming through. I mean, it's really backing up that premise that you know really the the most important commodity or or um, resource, natural or otherwise, a company has is really their data. Uh, and the ability to take advantage of that data in real time, near real time, depending on your definition, uh, our definition being you know, fast enough to, to have an impact, either save the customer, or improve the process, whatever it may be, that's really what's going to separate winners and losers in the 21st right. century economy. Um, and so that's, and that's one reason Splunk is having such success, because I think more and more people are starting to realize that. Um, you know, we're definitely still at the early stages of this big data market. You know, it's still early days. Um, CEO Godfrey Sullivan mentioned uh, you know, that three years ago, he had a little bit of a tougher time explaining to CIOs why their log data was important. You know, it's not boring. It's very important if you can actually draw some analysis out of it and draw some insight. Right. Uh, and he's having a much easier time with that conversation today. And I think right. that's only going to get easier uh, over time. And as you mentioned, we're moving to automo automotive uh, data. We're talking about uh, elevator data, you name it. So we're moving beyond that simple log file data from, from servers to other types of interesting data. And that conversation, the conversation's really interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting out on the floor a little later today and just kind of overhearing some of the customer uh, use cases and hearing what they're talking about and the different ways they might might be using Splunk. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The, the, the oil analogy is a good one because before they knew what to do with the oil, I think it just messed up a lot of people's farms. <laughs> but um, the fact that they can run different data sets against other data sets to come up with interesting correlations that they didn't know about really adds the context lens that 
that makes data much more valuable. Data as data is what it was before. What Splunk is enabling is, is context to be laid over that data to really extract the value. Again, I think an interesting thing is this whole world of APIs where no application exists in a silo anymore. It's how can I open it up and pull different sources of data? We saw the example with the, um, with the, with the Google Map API and, and, and drilling down. Uh, based on longitude and latitude in one piece of data into a Google Map API. I think that's pretty, pretty interesting, but there is, uh, there is further to go. You know, we had Marquez come in and talk about specifically doing a search or trying to do some analysis on something he was interested in and then finding out kind of ad hoc that there was this whole other path that he wanted to go down. And Michael said the same thing. His behavior was kind of ad hoc and I, I drill and I drill and I move around. Well, you know, the next stage is to take care of the people that aren't quite so inquisitive, that aren't quite so smart, that aren't quite so um, interested in figuring out answers, it's just being told what to do. Mm -hmm. So where the system's actually just kicking it out and saying, okay, you need to do X right. because these things are correlated in such a way. So I think the, yeah. the, the roadmap is, is, is vast for these guys and where they can still go with this technology. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I like the way you put that. Kind of, uh, you know, you've, you've got, some people are naturally curious, and that's you know in their personal lives, then it work. And others maybe are not, are less so. And so, the more that you can prompt a user mm -hmm. to start to uncover new things and new insights, the better. Yeah. Um, and so that's definitely uh, an area that uh, we should keep an eye on. Um, you know, I think from you know the a customer perspective, as I mentioned, with all these different data sources coming online, I mean, it's really the use cases are, are limitless. It's just a matter of your imagination at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, we're really getting to the point where. Pretty much every facet of life is going to be, uh, you know, tracked in some sense, and that's a scary thing in some ways. But it's also it opens up all these possibilities of, of new ways of helping, uh, not just business, but helping the planet, helping, uh, you know, with social causes, uh, depending on your your point of view. So um, there's just the sky's the limit in terms of what can happen. Yeah. Um, you know, who, who the winners and losers will be, I think, are the, are the companies that take advantage of these tools and these possibilities. And the ones that kind of shun it and continue to focus on the old ways of doing things, you know, ultimately I think they're going to be left behind because really there's no industry that I, don't, that I think big data is not going to impact. Yeah. I think we've seen that with some of the use cases here um, you know, and, and the, the cross-section of industries represented at this show. Right, and then, and then the other piece that, that I don't think it was as mature as I maybe expected it to be, and I don't know what those are good expectations, but kind of the whole partner pavilion and the partner application space. Um, hopefully we'll get a few more of those tomorrow, mm -hmm. but I still think, you know, while the team and, and, and Godfrey and the guys have done a good job of maintaining the culture inside of Splunk, it's still one company, uh, and it's still one way of looking at the world. And, you know, they've got the strategy to open up the platform so other people can attack different problems with a different filter in a different context using the technology. And that, I think, is, again, a whole nother uh, interesting thing that maybe will be at the, uh, the Conf 2013 in, in a little bit bigger uh, presence than it is here today. But, again, we're the Cube uh, at Splunk Conf 2012 in the Continental Hotel in lovely Las Vegas. The, the rains have stopped, the sun is down. Uh, we're giving you the wall-to-wall -wall coverage that you want. Uh, we invite you to participate. Um, data, dis, uh, data journey, right, data journey. It's been a long day. Data journey is the hashtag. <laughs> um, and of course, theCUBE. Um, I'm Jeff Frick, Silicon Angle. Really enjoyed the day today with my co-host, Jeff Kelly from wikibon.org. We look forward to seeing you all back tomorrow. Uh, I think we kick off what time do we kick off tomorrow? Uh, we're going to try to kick off around 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, we've got a, a, another great group of uh, some, some execs from Splunk. We've got some partners and customers as well. Uh, we'll have uh, a few Cube alums. We'll have uh, Eddie Satterley, uh, Chief Big Data Evangelist at Splunk. We've had him on before we'll be joining us. Uh, we'll have uh, Dan Woods from uh, Forbes.com. Uh, really well-known uh, columnist, uh, read his stuff, really good stuff at Forbes, covering the big data space and, and some of the, the evolution of the market. Uh, we'll have him on kicking off the show around 10 o'clock. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a full lineup tomorrow, 10 o'clock on, uh, another, another full day. We need to get our rest. We need to get our rest. We need to give a shout out to uh, Dave and John. Uh, we know you're here in spirit, guys. Um, a couple of other uh, Cube Emeritus, Beyond Cube alumni. Um, but it's been a great day. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've feel like you've gotten a little bit more information as to what's going on here at Conf 2012. Uh, we thank you for being here, and I think uh, should we move on to the, the, the evening's festivities as they have here at the show? I think that's probably a good idea. So okay. thanks everybody for watching, really appreciate it. We'll see you here tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pacific, on uh, siliconangle.tv, uh, theCUBE. <laughs>